So you brought up education, and I was just reading about the fact that in the social sciences, Marxists outnumber conservatives four to one. Um, uh, this was a study put out by Musa al Garbi uh, at Heterodox Academy. There was also an extensive study of 8,688 tenure track professors at 51 of the top ranked liberal arts colleges in the U.S. This was by the National Association of Scholars, and it found that the ratio of faculty members registered as Democrats compared to Republican is now at 13 to 1. Uh, the, the researcher here was Mitchell Langbert, um, and he found that 40% of these colleges had zero faculty members who were registered Republican, not a single one. Now, I am yeah. no Republican, um, never have been. Um, I'm a libertarian, and I've never voted Republican. But what this data suggests uh, to me is that there's a kind of groupthink. There's a kind of ideological homogeneity, um, a dogmatic intellectual monoculture, right, going on, dominating the academy that's not helping us, that is not serving students, that's not introducing students to the full range of, of human thought. Um, and in fact, Mitchell Langbert actually breaks down this, uh, this study by discipline and in communications, I'll, I'll just really quickly read it to you by fields. In communications, the ratio is 108 to 0, no registered Republicans. Anthropology, 56 to 0. Religion, 70 to 1. English, 48 to 1. Sociology, 44 to 1. Art, 40 to 1. It goes down and down and down and down. Classics, 27 to 1. Then you get down to the, the actual mathy... Um, hard sciences and things like that. And it starts to go down. Political science, 8 to 1. Computer science, 6 to 1. Physics, 6.2 to 1. Math, 5 to 1. Economics, 5.5 to 1. Chemistry, 5 to 1. Engineering, 1.6 to 1. Okay, so all of... So I just I want... Yeah. There's, a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on here, right? So so one is groupthink. I mean, the whole tenure system is 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 rooted in this idea that you promote people you like, you promote people who publish in the journals that you are running. And therefore, and, and it's true even within these disciplines, put aside, and, and, and even within the discipline, the discipline itself, put aside politics. It's true that like revolutionary papers, articles that are written that really change a field, almost never published in the leading journals. Right. So the leading journals in a field tend to publish the things that confirm what everybody right. already does. Of course. And I want to ask you a question about this, though, because and I think what you're saying right now is that there's a lack in the academy of institutionalized disconfirmation, which means if there's no one on the other side to check your biases, then um, yeah. you're going to publish a lot of biased work. So based on all of that, um, that long-winded list of showing how lopsided the academy is. What do you think Ayn Rand or objectivists would say about the current climate in academia, this ever-increasing tilt, especially in the humanities and social sciences, towards a kind of left-wing, anti-reason, anti-science, moral and epistemological relativism, this adoption of a kind of postmodern uh, worldview grounded in critical theory, uh, feminist criticism, post-structuralism, intersectionality, ethnic and identity studies programs, all of this. In other words, how can we use objectivism to combat what's going on in the universities to bring a little bit of sanity back? Or at least what would objectivists say about the tools we could use to combat identity politics, neo-Marxism, and other illiberal philosophies dominating the academy? Yeah, well, that's a big question, but I mean, I'll start with this. Look, uh, um, I mean, this is a huge problem in academia. There's no question about it. I, I also don't want to exaggerate it, though, because I think it can be exaggerated. Um, there are people who identify as the left who are still good professors who teach of good course. stuff. I mean, you know, as much as Stephen Pink is wrong on a lot of things, and he's leftist, and he's wrong on free but will. He's brilliant. And he's, he's brilliant, and he's got, and I'm sure his classes are pretty interesting. And, uh, and and I'm not sure adding a standard conservative, you know, is, is what is. And that, so the flip side of that is I'm not so conservatives are what you need in academia. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, the fact that it's all one so homogeneous is problematic and disturbing. But it's also true that to some extent conservative are pricing themselves or or, or or keeping themselves out of academia. One is because they don't go into some of these fields. My guess is they just they just not interested. Second is, look, I don't know. If you don't believe in evolution, I, I can't take you that seriously. And you want to be an anthropologist, but you don't believe in evolution, or you want to be a 
I don't know, any field almost, and you don't believe in evolution? I've never met a conservative, a mainstream, intellectual, intelligent, studied, evidence-based conservative that doesn't believe in evolution. And my thought is— There are plenty of them. I mean, look at at this whole think tank in, in, in Washington— in Washington State, dedicated to creationism, and you know to, they, they've got a scientific name for it now. But well, that's unfortunate. Um, but there should be. Yeah. You would so assume that if there wasn't. That, if, think about think about why Silicon Valley doesn't vote for president, right? If you're Silicon Valley, why he doesn't vote Republican for president? If you're in Silicon Valley, you've dedicated yourself to technology and science, and and then the stupid presidential candidates when they do the debate, not one of them will acknowledge that evolution is real. I mean, how can you vote? I mean, I, I, I'm not justifying them voting for Bernie Sanders, but how can you vote for a human being who, who <laughs> pretends to be intelligent, who is going to be president of the United States, who says, at best, I'm not going to comment on the question of evolution. You know, you know, it's so it, it's so primitive and barbaric that it has no place on 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 the thing. Now, it's true. Religion has no place in politics, but this isn't about religion. This is about their courage. And but it's also about their respect for science and the fact that they don't. So I think I think some conservatives disqualify themselves on, from academia because they're not serious. Some, because they, they, some they, are kept out. Some are kept out. There's no question. So the bias is there and there's no question the bias is there. But it's also true that I don't think conservatives are the solution because the conservatives, of course, are either mystics of some form or Kantians or something else. I think the solution is, I mean, the solution is, is some fresh thinking about everything, not just about politics. And I don't like that we define everything in terms of political agendas. But if you looked at philosophy department, how many of them are Kantian? You know, 70% or something. Yeah, that will always be even more if you look at the fundamental concept that there's no diversity even there and bringing in conservatives doesn't solve that. So what what objectivism is hopeful of that that we start diversifying those kind of ideas by bringing in people who will challenge the Kantians in in some of the humanities humanities will challenge the postmodernists who will in in um, in of course identity politics of course the way to challenge identity politics is to be an advocate of individualism and to it, it's not to change tribes, which is unfortunately what many on the right do, right? Oh no, your tribe definitions are no good. Let me give you my <laughs> tribal definitions. Um, but no, to, to abandon all tribal definitions for the sake of a of a real philosophical individualism. And that to me is what's lacking in academia. What's lacking in academia, and I think unfortunately conservatives and, and libertarians haven't picked up this mantle, but this is the mantle they need to pick up, is philosophical individualism as a counter to everything the left represents, both in politics and in kind of identity uh, politics, which is not really politics, which is more epistemology and more ethics. You know, it's, it's a real form of tribalism. So I would like to see us be more philosophical and focus in on the root causes. So f- for example, we need to defend free will. We need to defend individualism and, and the individual is the beneficiary of his own actions because only then can you defend capitalism. If you are not, shouldn't be morally, the beneficiary of your own product, your own actions, redistribution of wealth is fine. Coercion is great because it achieves a moral purpose. The moral purpose is more equality in society. This is my book, Equal is Unfair, right? If if the goal is, if you don't own your stuff, this is why I think the most important speech Barack Obama ever made um, was one of his more philosophical speeches was that you didn't build that speech, which he, which he stole from Elizabeth Warren, who might be our next president. Um, there's a scary thought. Yes, but we did pay the people who did build that a fair market oh, wage. <laughs> exactly. And that's my book explains all of that and why you are the beneficiary of these things. But he gave the speech you didn't build that. And nobody, very few, I mean, people made fun of it, but they didn't critique it. There was very little actual critique because the fact is the conservatives don't have a critique of it because morally they believe in redistribution. Morally, they believe that your purpose of your life is to serve others. They just want to tinker with it a little differently than the left does. So what is needed is a critique of the idea of altruism, the idea of egalitarianism, um, not just of its political manifestation, but of its philosophical roots. And again, that's what we do in Equal is Unfair. That's why I think this is one of the biggest issues of our time, this whole egalitarian idea, which with the next presidential, you know, as the left 
you know, we'll see what, what happens to the left, but which is a leftist idea, which the right never challenges really. Um, but you didn't build that is, is, is rooted. I mean, a, a, almost every academic I know believes that to some extent or another, particularly academics who've never been in the business world. Um, of course, they don't believe it applies to them, right? <laughs> when you ask them, does that mean the article you wrote, you didn't write? <laughs> oh, no, you know, we're special. Um, but but they, they believe it, and that's what needs to be challenged. It's those fundamental ideas in epistemology and ethics. The politics will take care of itself if we can get that. And that's where we need the diversity of ideas. And, and uh, you know, at the Institute, the Anwen Institute, we have been trying for years, and it's hard, to train people uh, to be academics, to, to go into these universities, to help them out with dissertation grants and help them out at, in university positions to create that diversity. But the left is so dominant. We need so many people. It's going to take a long time. And, it, and you know, and the world is crumbling in the meantime, philosophically.